Then we're going to install our push tubes. If I've got enough oil on it, I took these and rolled them across the bench. And they, if I stick it down there, I can actually feel it pulling the push tube up and down. So that means it's nice and free in there, which is good. That one needs a little more oil. Also want to lube the cups here. Usually just dump some oil down those holes and it, yep, yep. I'm feeling pull them up and down. You always want to keep these in the same place that you took them off. Yeah, because they develop wear patterns. And if you don't, it's going to change your overhead set sooner than it wouldn't if you put it back the way it went. All right, these are what we call a floating valve bridge. This side kind of moves a little bit. This has something to do with the exhaust brake when we get that on. Notice one side's slotted, the other's not. That's to help it slide as it actuates. But these you basically just put on, there's no adjustment. We take our rocker arm assembly. And it basically sits in here like so. We'll make sure your push tubes get started in your rockers. These are our valve adjustments right here. So basically we'll just go through and torque these down once we get them all in. But you can see that just sets in the little saddle there. And put them on. We want to get our push tubes lined up correctly. This tube and this tube, uh, they feed oil to the exhaust brake, so those are kind of important. If you don't have them in the right spot, the exhaust brake bolts to here, 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 and here. The book does a pretty good job of explaining where it goes. Okay, we're going to go through and torque all these. We to 48. Notice that one's pushing the valves down. Once I get them all torqued, I'll go back through and double check them on. So that's pushing the valve down. Kind of like doing this by hand because it there's problems, you can feel it. I said earlier that gives oil to the Jake brake. So, pretty important it's in the right spot. Or the internal compression brake would be the correct term for it. Made by Jake brake. Okay, we're getting ready to set our overhead. Got to take these off. They're uh, part of the exhaust brake stuff. So we'll have to torque them back on when we're done. Okay, so we're going to set the overhead. We can do one, we're on top dead center number one. We can do one, two, four intake, and one, three, five exhaust. Then we're going to turn the engine, crank a revolution, the cam a half a revolution. Then we're going to do uh, two, four, six exhaust, and then three, five, six intake. If you look in the book, it tells you all about it. The intake is 12 thousandths. That goes right in here. These are go-no-goes again. That won't fit, so that one's definitely going to have to be set. So one, two, one needs set, two, one, two, four intake. Let's see that one. Let's see. One, three, oh, that one's perfect, and five exhaust. These are a step, so back here's a 24 and up here's a 22. Uh, that's what I call go no go. So we're going to loosen that one. That one was good. Intake needed it too. Intake, intake, and exhaust. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do, usually start with my exhaust, set it in here like so, bring it down until it just stops. It's torqued to 18 foot pounds. Torque it and then I'm gonna check it. It came out just right. So this one isn't too bad. Didn't do that one, we did this one. So like I say, bring it down until it just touches. It's kind of a feel to it. And then I'm using my torque wrench at 90 degrees because it would change my torque if I didn't. Okay, that's perfect. So now I'm going to go to number one intake. Notice I don't even feel it until I torque it. Perfect. Um, if you read in the book, Cummins actually has, they have a procedure where you can get an inch pound screwdriver out. Tighten these down to three inch pounds and just call it good. Um, I don't like it personally, but it is another way that you can do that. Okay, that's good. Um, now, again, on an overhead, it's more important that your feel's the same all the way across rather than them being exact. Um, so, what, in other words, I'm saying that one person should do it, not two. Right, I got a slight drag, perfect. So, now we'll go ahead and rotate the engine. Okay, I'm going to go turn my engine over right here in direction of engine rotation which is counterclockwise from the rear. I'm going to have to watch on the front with the mark, so I'll go up the front where you can see it. Okay, here's the mark we're moving. It was up here. We need to go down here. Oop. So we get to that mark on bottom dead center. Now we're ready to set the rest of our valves. Okay, this time we can set, uh, let's see, be two, two, four, six exhaust, and um, let's see, be three, five, six intake. So two, four, six exhaust and three, five, six intake. So we'll go up here, check our, and start on this one. Uh, which would be four exhaust. It's way off. All right, so our, uh, your exhaust settings always your bigger, larger dis er, gap. Intake's typically going to be, you know, 10, 12, 8. But that's where I'm checking that one, so that one's good. And let's come back to six. And that one needs fixed. I like to come through with a marker before I do this, so I mark which ones are set when. Like here I made them red and red and blue. Blue was the first time, red was the was this set that we're doing now. And you can see how that stops. That's what a go no go does. Okay, let's see. Five and six intake now. Way too big, way too small, so I'll just do both of them. You just gotta move them around. Yeah, they had something way screwed up here. Hmm, interesting. To do some looking to make sure it's right. We gotta go to five, do the same thing.
Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, and then four, six, is that two? Exhaust, that's good. We're gonna set, check three intake. We're ready to go. Okay, we're gonna put these buttons back on for the exhaust brakes. So they basically torque the same as the valve adjustments do. It's the 18. That's what actually actuates the exhaust brakes. So if that's not there, it's not good. Okay. This thing has an O-ring gasket here. This is called the rocker box or the intermediate box. Let's see. Oh, I'm backwards. These right here, if you take that one screw out, you can actually change the harness if you need to. So, we get all these started down the center. They're going to do the same thing. They're going to torque to the 18 again. Just like everything else has. Same thing. We'll go through and torque these. Make sure there's no wires pinched in it. on Just two fingers on these you can already see this one's been busted off so I had to rig it to make it work two fingers like that can't stress that enough these torque to like five six inch pounds not very much at all the clarity is not really sensitive on these you can hook it up either way um, I usually try and put it in the way that the wires kind of lay in here I'm make sure it's not gonna hit a rocker arm or something like that that very well could have there Make sure it's out of the way, all this stuff. Usually no reason to even take these out of the rocker cover. Like I said, I can't stress enough. Do not use a wrench on these. Injectors are anywhere from 500 bucks to 2,000 bucks, depending on what it is. And there's no other way to replace it other than or to fix that, other than to replace it or rig it like I did down there. And then when you send your injector back, you won't get the core either. So do not break these off. Warranty's gotten really